I am standing right in the middle of the marketplace in Saffron Walden today. Now, the population of Uttlesford, with Great Dummo in the south and where I am in Saffron Walden in the north, is expected to grow by 31% in the next 20 years. That's 24,000 people. Uh, with the M11, a direct train line to London, and one of the biggest employers in the region, Stansted Airport. This area is one of the most successful places, well, in the world, quite frankly. Uh, but, as I said earlier on, with success becomes challenges. And as in the case of many parts of Essex and the rest of the country, we've spoken many times on this programme about the shortage of housing. And this is one of the big issues in Saffron Walden at the moment. Saffron Walden is one of many towns earmarked for expansion and the local plan, which is due to be debated over the next few weeks at the council, will, if it goes ahead, expand the town by 25% or thereabouts. Now, it'll be the biggest expansion of the town in its 900-year history, and over the next few weeks, the local council is due to adopt its local plan. Now, as you can possibly imagine, there's a fair amount of hoo-ha going on about the number of houses being built. Now, let's talk about that. Dan Starr is the chair of the residence group WeAreResidents.org. Dan, morning. Morning. Uh, also with us is Conservative Councillor Susan Barker, who is Cabinet Member for the Environment at Uttlesford District Council. Susan. Good morning. Now, um, first of all, Dan, people have got to live somewhere. This is great for the area, isn't it? All this expansion, new houses being built on the outskirts of uh, Saffron Walden. It means that all these shops here will have more people to shop in them. The local economy will rise. It's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? Affordable housing is an issue, and housing actually in general is an issue. That's why house prices have been going through the roof here. It's really to do with the location of the houses and the infrastructure required for them, school places, roads, doctor surgeries, and employment too. So it's really about the location rather than, uh, you know, the number of houses. So what's wrong with the proposed locations that have been put forward at the moment? Well, primarily in Saffron Walden, all of the uh, transport infrastructure is on the west of the town, and the primary locations for housing, 840-odd, have been approved already, are on the east of the town. And our roads are, you know, it's a medieval market town. These are cow tracks that have been paved over over the last 400 years, and they can't take big cars, and they can't take big lorries and cars. And we have uh, the only illegal air pollution area inside Uttlesford. Uh, we get gridlocked regularly, and so west is best, east is a poor location. So you, you, you don't have any objection to the number of houses that are being proposed. What is the number, by the way? Because I, I, I read through all the stuff and I got terribly confused as to what, what was what. Well, uh, with regard to Saffron Walden, 806 have already been approved. Uh, there are another 300 in application that has been refused and an additional 300 on a site that's been allocated, making about... Uh, 12 to 1400 somewhere variably in there and, and these are all to the east of the town are they uh these are primarily to the east of town there are some small sites with 15 or 20 to the west but but 95 percent of these are to the east and and is there room to put all these houses to the west of the town is, uh, is there land for these houses uh there are some employment sites so job sites are being turned into housing which is a problem because that creates more people having to commute somewhere else yeah, but could, you, could you actually put could you put the houses that are being proposed for the east could you put them in the west where, where you're saying that they should be well there is land all around the town all it requires is negotiations with the landowners right do you object per se to the number of houses that are being proposed i think that there is a uh there is a, a growth of the town between 21 and 25 percent within a a 10 to 12 year period is quite a lot of growth to absorb and so I think that has to be done quite sensitively uh, and requires infrastructure. For example uh, the last primary school place in town disappeared uh, this year and so now the primary school, our children are being bussed out to the villages to get to school instead of walking to primary school and 850 houses have been approved and there are no primary school places and so you know these are issues and so I think it's the rate of build of houses and it's the type and mix of houses and where they're located. Susan Barker, you're, you're a portfolio holder for the environment here. You're putting too many houses too fast in the wrong place. Would you agree? 
No, I certainly wouldn't agree. Um, Saffron Walden is the largest town in Uttlesford. It is not unreasonable that a town that is currently 7,000 is looking to grow by around 1,200 houses over the next 15 to 16 years. These houses are not appearing tomorrow. This is a long-term plan through to 2031. And if approved by the inspector, the houses will be delivered over that long timescale, along with infrastructure, such as roads and schools, as are required to make the whole thing viable. But are you putting them in the wrong place? Because, as Dan was saying, uh, they're being proposed over the east side and all the infrastructure and the roadway networks are over on the west side. It seems a bit of a silly place to put them, really. The way that houses are allocated to sites is that one has something called a strategic housing land assessment. Um, The land has to be available and it has to be put forward by the landowner. On one side of town, land was put forward by a number of landowners. On the other side of the town, the land is owned by Audley End Estates. Audley End Estates have not put land forward. We cannot allocate housing on land that has not been put forward for development. But surely, if the land that is available, and let's face it, if you're a landowner, you're going to be biting your hand off uh, to sell the land, aren't you? Uh, Because they're going to make a huge amount of money out of this. If the land is simply in the wrong place, surely it shouldn't be built on, should it? I wouldn't say it was in the wrong place. It is adjacent to the existing town development. Um, It's very close to the town centre. It's not five miles away. It abuts existing development. Well, I I was here. I got here about eight o'clock, just before eight o'clock this morning. And uh, as Dan was saying, it's it's a lovely medieval market town, narrow streets and so on. And there were a lot of cars going through. With all these extra houses, isn't the town going to become gridlocked? Um, the County Council, who we have to consult with over expansion plans, not just in Saffron Walden but throughout Uttlesford, have come up with a number of mitigating um, junction improvements and roads and parking restrictions that they hope will help the flow. The flow is bad now. It is a medieval town. There is no logical bypass for the existing residents. Why is it busy here at 8 o'clock in the morning? There are 190 ho- sorry, shops in Saffron Walden, only 15 empty, thank goodness, a very thriving town, 190 shops, there's a lot of staff coming into work, let alone people coming into work. Oh, houses. come on, the people were coming through the town as well, weren't they? I mean, it's not, it's not all staff for the shops, is it? Of course not. People go to Audley End Station to commute to London, very popular, it is a big commuter centre. We recently won, you know, best district council in the country, well, yeah. um, you know, best place to live. No wonder people want to live here and be here. Um, it's a lovely place to come to and visit. Now, it has been said that because of the Section 106 agreements, which uh, is... It, uh, what is the Section 106? Just explain it to me simply. Um, for example, a, a housing development of 300 houses in Saffron Walden would be required to deliver 40% affordable houses. So of those 300, yeah. 40%, 120 will be affordable houses. Last year, we allocated 96% of our affordable houses built to local people local Uttlesford residents on our housing waiting list. We have a housing waiting list of 1,500 people. So under the 106, we require an element of affordable housing. We may require roads. We may require contributions to upgrading sewage works. We may require, as we have done on one planning application, a contribution towards a new cycleway to the station. So the, it, basically a 106 is a deal between the local authority and the people who are wanting to build on the area that, right, we'll give you planning permission if you give the society back this, this and this. Yeah. Now it has been said that you're mortgaging the future of Saffron Walden for a, a short-term fix of money. What would you say to that? Um, certainly not. Um, development With development you require infrastructure. Um, the County Council will be required to provide school places for every single child in Saffron Walden that needs one. It provided one for every child in Essex that needed one this last September. Um, Development is coming. The government is forcing development upon us. It's the Dave Monk programme, live from the marketplace in Saffron Walden today. Um, As I said earlier on, I have the uh, town hall in front of me. I've just found out, actually, that the bit I was describing, the Victorian front of the uh, town hall, was tacked on to Georgian buildings. But it looks fantastic. Now, they want to keep it looking fantastic, but what do you do about the number of people who want to come and live in an area? Everybody's got to live somewhere. That means if you've got a gorgeous place like this, a load of people are going to want to live there. So you need new houses. Thing is, 
How many do you build? Where do you stick them? Dan Starr is the chair of the residents group weareresidents.org. Uh, Conservative councillor Susan Barker is cabinet member for the environment. And there is a conflict over it because a lot of proposals have been put forward for building just on the outskirts of Saffron Walden, which the people of We Are Residents don't want to happen in such vast quantities. Now, look, I, I'm a little bit confused because... One of the planning applications from Kia was, I think, 300 houses, wasn't it? Yeah, 300, both nodding to me. Yeah, 300 houses. But you turned this down, didn't you, Susan? The planning committee turned it down, yes. Yeah. On the same day, oddly, as they approved two others in very close locations. Yeah. All on one side of the town. Right. So, Dan, w- what's the problem? Because they turned this application down. Yeah, there are, there are a number of reasons that the planning committee found uh, for this. Uh, the, uh, they're required to look at cu- cumulative impacts to the environment of pollution, and those hadn't been considered properly, and clearly this was adding 300 houses on top of 847, and it is a pollution area. Uh, there are questions about school places. It, it's actually quite a poor application. Uh, unlike the other applications that Council Barker talked about, it wasn't bringing jobs to the town, uh, and it wasn't uh, bringing other, other things that you would expect. It was just houses. The developers squeezing as many houses into as small places as they can. One of the main reasons for turning it down is to do with road infrastructure. Uh, Essex, in their uh, consultation, in their report that, that uh, the District Council asked them, had, had said that you needed a uh, connector road for the town yeah. to move the traffic out. And uh, this was found to be undeliverable because the landowner didn't want to sell the land. And so there are a number of reasons why it was turned down. It's actually a poor application. Some of the others aren't as bad. This is a poor application for the town. And, and the Section 106 agreements we talked about earlier were particularly poor for the town. And, but they've appealed it, haven't they? Uh, they have appealed the, the, uh, the planning application. Uh, it is uh, due for a hearing with the planning inspecting in early December. So, obviously, you as a council, having turned down that application, are fighting the appeal in December, are you, Susan? Well, first of all, can I say about the application that actually it provided the first bit of that link road. It also provided a vast amount of new sports facilities and a community hub. So saying it didn't provide anything is a bit odd to myself. The planning committee turned the application down. Yes. No, we are not defending that application. Why not? Because... As you started this afternoon, this morning, sorry, our local plan actually includes this site as part of the strategic housing for the district over the next 20 years. And this site is an integral part of that plan, which is going in front of the inspector on the 17th of November. So the council decided not to defend this appeal, as actually it's part of our long term plan, these 300 houses in this location. But it, it just sort of confuses me, but you turn it down on one hand and then you don't fight an appeal on the other hand. D- don't you see how people might get a bit confused by that? The planning committee turned it down. The yeah. planning committee is a discrete group of 14 members, most of whom were there on that day and agreed the other two planning applications. Mm. The council as a whole voted not to defend this appeal. OK, uh, what do you feel about that? Uh, well, I think it's it's quite poor that the planning committee's decision isn't supported. Um, the uh, at the end of the day, as Councillor Barker said, this is a site which the district council would like some sort of planning application to come forward on. We don't believe this is the right one, and uh, the planning committee didn't feel it was the right one. The district council clearly feels it could look a bit of an idiot if it's saying this is an area we would like to build, and then it turns down an application. And so I can understand why uh, you know a lot of pressure may have been applied to to the council not to decide not to fight this appeal but it's fairly unprecedented certainly the town council is working with us the residents group uh, to fight this appeal uh, and the town council is not a fan of this application uh, and nor are the residents of the town what does the local plan do Uh, the local plan is the plan for where we put strategic housing and employment sites over the next 20 years Um, so it is allocating in total almost 10,000 houses across Uttlesford um, nearly 3,000 in Great Dunmo, um, 2,100 in Elsenham. So, so with this local plan, um, has it got to be agreed by all the people? Because clearly there's still a lot of conflict about this particular part of it. So will this be held in abeyance? Will this be part? And what, what could happen as far as the local plan is concerned, as far as Saffron Walden is concerned? Well, the local plan allocates the Keir site and other sites for development in the future. Uh, around 1,200 in all. That is going in front of the inspector 
on the 17th of November. And people like we are residents will be able to go and make their points to the inspector. The inspector will sit for two weeks. After that, he will draw his conclusions about whether our local plan is sound. And if it is found sound, then that will go forward to council next year and be adopted. Right, so even though, I'd say, I'm still a bit confused, even though the council turned down this particular site, it's still part of your local plan because of the actual application that's been put in? Um, no, it would have been part of our plan even if an application had not yet been received. Right, because you still think it's a good place to build? We think we need to build a number of houses in our major town. Right. This is one of the most suitable sites that was put forwards. Now, isn't, isn't this... Dan, the whole point, if you've got a, pe- a load of people who want to sell land and you desperately need houses, then it's logical to put those houses on the land that's available rather than the land that's not available. Uh, completely. And actually, at the last election, the current uh, Conservative Control Council fought the election on building a new settlement or even a number of new settlements because uh, overdeveloping existing towns is very difficult for infrastructure. And there are a lot of places where land has come forward during the development of the local plan for those locations. But after the election, several months after the election, uh, the uh, Conservative majority decided that they would uh, ditch that plan to build a new settlement, on which they were voted in, and instead to disperse the houses into the existing settlements. And the infrastructure issues are the real issues here. Right, so instead of this, you would go... This is Elsinham and around there, wasn't it? Uh, well, there are a number of locations. I, I, I would look at the evidence and decide I don't necessarily think Elsinham is necessarily the best location. It has some poor infrastructure places too. But the, the, but the point is, a new settlement rather than expanding this existing settlement. I think so, because as you roll it out, all the schools come along and all the roads and all this. In fact, what's interesting, with the local plan hearing, uh, I got a letter from the inspector yesterday saying that the highways agency is concerned about the lack of provision of highways of major roads with regard to this local plan. So there are questions being asked. It's going to be a difficult plan at the hearing. OK, thank you so much to both of you for coming here today. And obviously, we haven't reached any sort of resolution on this and uh, things will develop, no doubt, over the next few weeks and months. Thank you so much uh, to Dan Starr, who's chair of the residence group WeAreResidents.org, and to Conservative Councillor Susan Barker, who's cabinet member for the environment at Uttlesford District Council. We are in the marketplace in Saffron Walden today. If you've just joined me, uh, thank you so much for choosing BBC Essex and the Dave Monk programme. It is absolutely charming here. Now, I'm joined by three people who are steeped in Saffron Walden. Uh, I think that's the way to put it. Judith Rodden and Karen Birch are from the Walden local paper, the Walden local. Morning to you. Morning. Good morning. And also Nicola Slade, who is from the Mocha Cafe Diner. Hello. Hello. Now, Nicola, to start with, what's it like having a business in Saffron Walden? Because, it's, you know, it's a tourist destination. You've got a lot of local people here as well. I mean, it must be gorgeous, isn't it? It's wonderful. We really enjoy being in Saffron Walden. We've been here 47 years as a family-owned business. 47 years? 47 years the Mocha Cafe Diner has been um, operating. Wow. Um, bought from father to son and now we run it with um, our brother and sister still work there um we are open seven days a week and we have a cut the plug girl i'm talking about i'm talking about trading it's great we have a great loyal customer base that come in midweek and at the weekends is when the town is really busy but midweek you can't you know there are people in the town who do come here for for you as um, a local trader, what are the main issues that you find? What are the mo- mo- main problems, the main issues that people talk about? Coming into Saffron Walden has to be the traffic um, problems around here, digging up various roads, building the new housing estates around here. There is a lot of disruption coming in and out of Saffron Walden. So people do say they can't be bothered to come in because they have to sit in traffic so long. Also, the parking issues, they say they can't get parked um, and they get tickets particularly on bank holidays and Sundays which is unusual they're kind of one of the main issues that we hear and what about you actually trading here because a lot of small medium-sized businesses have had a torrid time over the last few years haven't they they have I think the thing that we've maintained is um, our buying you know making sure we're not overbuying, making sure we're not overspending and um, we do loyalty cards for customers to try and get them to come back in um, and say we just do what we do and do it very well and, and hope to keep them coming in 
So a local business, uh, an old business, but you've got to move with the times. Yes, you have. Right. Um, things like um, you know on on the internet and updating your what you're doing, the specials board, things like that. We have. You know, everybody has to move on, yeah. Now, um, Judith Rodden uh, from the uh, Walden Local. Uh, I was reading your uh, reports last night about the, the local housing situation. This, this has got to be the main problem at the moment, hasn't it? It has, and particularly the uh, lack of affordable housing for local people who want to stay in the area, which has been a big problem. But, you see, I, I, was, I had two people on earlier on with different views, and on the one hand, you realise that you've got to have more housing. On the other hand, people say, well, it's going to spoil the local area, the infrastructure won't handle it. And Nicola was just saying, you know, getting into Saffron Walden is a nightmare, parking is a nightmare. With more houses, it's only going to get worse. Yes, it is going to get worse, and traffic congestion on some of the streets is appalling. And, of course, that's leading to worsening conditions in terms of air pollution. We already break the EU limits in three locations, I understand. And the district council says, well, it will do something, but we don't know what it will do. And so far, it has not done much, as far as we can see. But it's remarkable, when you look at this gorgeous area that you're in, that you've got pollution troubles. nobody, Nobody would believe it. Well, apparently we do, according to the measurements, yes. And, of course, you know, going round and round the marketplace, as people seem to be doing, they've picked up a nasty American habit of doing that. And that's, that's what's happened. Actually, while we've been standing here, that's exactly what people have been doing, because we're, we're in a sort of central safe area that is uh, for car parking. You can park here, as I said earlier on, for 30 minutes uh, with no return uh, within three hours. But, of course, at this time of day, there's loads of people waiting to park, and they're just going round and round. car park just over there. There's another one five minutes walk down there. I don't know quite, quite what it is, but it's getting worse, this. It's, people are picking up the habit, I think. But with more houses, this is only going to get worse until, unless something is done about it. Well, there's not much we can do now because the houses are there and therefore the people and therefore the cars and therefore the pressure on the schools, yeah. on the sewage, the water supply and everything else you can think of. Now, um, let's talk to Karen. Now, Karen, you're, you're a photographer, so you're used to just being behind the camera. But, of course, you see an awful lot, don't you? Yes, I so do. And we are very, very lucky because the Walden Local is a very local community newspaper and we work hand in hand with all of the traders and everybody and they do feel it's their paper. So any photograph, be it any time of day, night, weekends, we're there. And that's why it's so important to preserve our local newspapers, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. I mean, I know people can go online, but we try to promote through our paper to shop locally because our shops are amazing here. It's a beautiful town. We've got restaurants, we've got coffee shops, the mocha, <laughs> and lots what of... What is money. this? Are you, on, are you on commission or something? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 a very very lovely town. It's a very safe town. I mean, I don't that's been mentioned before, but we are lucky that we have a very very safe town and there are not many towns where you can walk about at night and not feel threatened. What about community activities? Because as a local newspaper, you will no doubt be asked, Karen, to go along and photograph lots and lots of local things happening. What sort of things do you go along to as a photographer? It can be anything from a check presentation. Um, this town is phenomenal when it comes to actually charity organisations and giving their money freely. So we, we cover lots of charity events, lots of council events. I mean, absolutely anything we are there we're only a phone call away people phone us and we're there and and uh, judith how did you come to be doing this tell me your history <laughs> you don't want to know man <laughs> oh i do i do you, you spark my interest even more <laughs> um i trained as a prehistoric archaeologist and there are not many jobs for middle-aged or you know, to be polite uh female archaeologists around these days so i've known karen for longer than either of us would wish to admit And I sort of fell into the job, but I enjoy it very much. (laughs) How fantastic. So what sort of things do you go along to? Because I'm assuming that you write the copy. Well, yes, some of it. Well, um, there's a tremendous lot going on here culturally. Mm. uh, Music, the arts, um, theatre, music hall, Saffron Hall, of course, which you've heard about, which is really something really tremendous on a national scale. Um, So, yes, we cover... Everything. I know, lost cats upwards. <laughs> Look, lovely, thank you very much indeed. Lost cats upwards, I like that. We started the programme discussing the plan for many, many new houses in the outskirts, the eastern aspect of Saffron Walden. If you get a chance, have a look on a map.
and and just look at the east and and all the big housing is on the other side in the west uh, not big housing the big uh, road transport systems you know the m11 and so on so you've got all these people who live in the east trying to cross the town to go to the west now something i think everybody agreed that something would have to be done about that but are they right to build new houses in a place like this well, of course they of course you've got to build new houses haven't you got to build new houses because more people want the houses the thing is how many do you build and where do you put them and i think these are the big issues that we were talking about earlier on that we will no doubt go back to as the weeks and months progress on bbc essex